Well, New Japan are still struggling trying to move forward with two things that goes on in their minds. One is the fact that Will Ospreay had to vacate the IWGP World Heavyweight title. But the real question is who is going to run it. But also, they're still dealing with the fact that there's another surgency coming up from the COVID-19 all over Japan. Also, very interesting matches took place in AEW Elevation with the appearance of two New Japan stars, Ren Narita and, of course, the king of sneaky style, Rocky Romero. So, buckle up. Let's get ready to start, have another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Leader Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I'm your host Jay right here. So let's begin with New Japan Pro Wrestling with the road to Wrestle Grand Slam. Now, this sh this whole thing that's been going on in Japan with the sec with a big surge that's taking place in Japan. Had to postpone some of their events, mostly from Tokyo. And of course, many wrestlers from New Japan tested positive for the COVID-19. But however, that's not one of the... <coughs> that's only some parts of what's been going on. As I mentioned before, Will Ospreay had a vacant the IWGP World Heavyweight title due to a neck injury they obtained back in um, in April or March. For wrestling Dodaku when he was facing against Shingo Tagaki. Now I will get more into that by the end of this part of the New Japan segment. So let's go from start to finish. First match we have Yoda Suji, the young lion, taking on the Bullet Club member, oh, better known as the Tokyo Pimp, Yujiro Takahashi. Now, <coughs> don't know for sure if this is one of uh, Suji's tests because his biggest match that he wants to face is Tetsuya Naito, but Naito told him, tranquilo. But there was no English commentary for this one. Only Japanese I couldn't make out for what they're saying, but the match was good. But however, Yujiro picked up the victory for it, for this match. Next match we have a Bullet Club members Ghetto and Chase Owens taking on Suzuki Goon, Doki Doiki and Zack Sabre Jr. Taichi, in the other hand, was on the commentary section. Now, this was a a very interesting dynamic. Basically, what has been happening, uh, dangerous techers have lost the opportunity to regain the IWGP heavyweight titles, but that kind of stings a little bit for them. But it is, for, but this is interesting for them to face other members of Bullet Club. I'm talking about Ghetto, the blacksmith, and of course, uh, the crown jewel, Chase Owens. <coughs> but I think there's still some grudge between the Gen Suzuki Goons, uh, dangerous techers against Bullet Club. But the way this match ended was amazing with Zack Sabre Jr. actually submitting. Um, ghetto up to make him tap out because that's what happens. Zack Sabre Jr. is all about making you tap out. And that's what he did. It was good. I enjoyed it. Next up, we have Tome Akihamna and Hiroshi, Hiroyoshi Tenzan taking on the G.O.D. Tama Tonga and Tangaloa along with Ghetto. This match, you can guess it was good, but however, it did not have the story built up. But however, you can guess right from the start that G.O.D. was going to win. But that's not the the thing that happened. As I mentioned, the Dangerous Techers have failed to regain the IWGP heavyweight tag team titles. And of course, 
they decide to mock Tai Chi right in his face that he is unable to regain these titles. So that means they have to go to the back of the line and start again, which Tai Chi will not take that lightly. But do I think they could have a chance to regain those titles? Yes, but the question is remain, when could that happen? I don't know. But the, also the other question that remains, who will be the next guys to challenge G.O.D. for the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team titles? And that is a pretty big list. Next up, we got the United Empire, Great Okan and Jeff Cobb taking on Master Watto and Kota Ibushi. Now, this match build up is building up for a rivalry between Kota Ibushi and Jeff Cobb. As you recall, Kota Ibushi lost the IWGP World Heavyweight title to uh, Will Ospreay. But however, Jeff Cobb has some unfinished business with Kota Ibushi. It was him who eliminated him out of the G1 Climax. And this time, it was now it's become personal. So basically, this rivalry is building up. But however, you can... Yes, there are moments where you can guess that they will fight back. But however, it did not happen that way. Jeff Cobb decided to mock Kota Ibushi by using the Kamigoye onto Master Watto. While Great Okan had him to make him watch helplessly, unable to save his partner. So basically, this has become a bit of personal between both men. Now the final, the, the main event, it's an eight-man tag team match. We got... All members of LIJ, except for Hiromu, who is still injured, Bushi, Tagagi, Sanada, and Naito taking on the Chaos members of the six-man Never Openweight Tag Team Champions, teaming with the, the ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi. In this particular match, it seems there's a bit of a grudge between now with Tomo, uh, Tomo Ido Ishii and Naito. Naito doesn't want nothing to do with them, but for however... Ishii has a tendency to lose control or just blast at anybody that comes through. But, however, the match ended beautifully once again by Shingo Tagagi, who won this match. But once again, the rivalry between Ishii and Naito rages on. But, however, post-match has become interesting. Shingo is not upset that he lost the match, but he also knows it's a crime chain that Will Ospreay had to vacate the title, but he's questioning the heads of New Japan. What are they going to do with the IWGP World Heavyweight title situation? Now, I did mention this to Nico today, telling him what the, there is the obvious that he would want a piece of it, <coughs> part of it. But however, Naito seems like he's interested now, despite the fact that he disagreed with, with Bushi, Ibushi, Uniting both the Intercontinental and the Heavyweight title. Don't know what changes mind. Is Sonata also interested? These are the three top, the three heavyweights in LIJ are most likely the ones that could get it. But however, who else wants a piece of it? That's my guess. All we can do is see what New Japan officials are planning. I can't wait to see what they're going to do. But better make it right. Okay, so the last thing I got here for all of you is the AEW Dark Elevation. Opening match is QT Marshall along with the Factory against Robo, who last time <coughs> lost against uh, Penta. But this time you get QT. And as you know, the, the rivalry between the Factory and the Nightmare family can, rages on. But you can guess right away that QT won his match. Next match is a women's match. We have Abaddon taking on Layla Gray. You know right from the start. When it comes to Abaddon, you know you, she freaks you out. She's going to win her matches no matter what. By using the finisher, the grave or whatever she calls it. I don't know. Then we have Thunder Rosa taking on Ashley Diabowsi. Uh, Great match. I love Thunder Rosa once again. And don't forget, this coming when, uh, Tuesday, number one contendership's on the line. If she loses, she will no longer be coming to AEW. But that's another conversation for another time.
But as you know, Thunder Rosa is my favorite wrestler. I love what she does. So she won her match by that new submission move that she applied. Was great. I enjoyed it. They throw in a little video package about the gun club. How Billy Gunn was mostly trying to ensure that his sons, both Colton and Austin, are set for life. I don't think he never would have imagined that guys like them would succeed in the wrestling business. Because, you, you know... Being a wrestler is hard work. There's a lot of struggles into it. I'm not a wrestler. I don't know what's that like, but I can imagine it. How it, how difficult it is trying to make some money and all this other things. But it is what it is. But I think both Colton and Austin are lucky that they get to team with their dad. And Billy did stated that once things are, they have everything under their control. He could retire and. Watch them grow up. And that's pretty amazing to hear from him. Next up, we got Lee Johnson taking on Daniel Garcia. Daniel Garcia made the biggest mistake of his life in this match where he's trying to riled up Lee Johnson. And he did. But unfortunately, it cost him the match. So Lee Johnson won. Now, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky have now made a good st statement as they know they have been successful as a tag team but however now they want to also not only make a play as tag team competitors but also as singles competitors but however they still have their grudge against Darby Allen and Sting who they're gonna face this coming Sunday at double or nothing next up we have Nyla Rose along with Vicky Guerrero taking on Robin Renegade but you can guess in this particular match that Nyla Rose won by applying the Beast Bomb. And it's over, baby. That's how it ends with her. Next up, we have, of course, Ethan Page along with Scorpio Sky taking on a member of the Dark Order, Alex Reynolds. As you know, they've been dealing with Ethan Page ever since they've been getting in the way trying to make sure that Darby Allen loses because as you know Darby Allen is trying to keep the memory of Brody Lee alive but it's all about the jealousy that's always been in the storylines they've been putting it's about jealousy but you know they think it's the other way around they're saying they're jealous of them no but however Ethan Page applied the e ego ed ego's edge he won just like that Next up, we got Tay Conti taking on the debut of Queen Aminata. I love Tay Conti. She is an amazing competitor. I mean, she is fantastic. You know, with her judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu style that she applies, great. And that's how she always wins her matches. And what a great competitor. And she is the winner for this one. Next up, we got Mike Sada along with Matt. Taking on Penta El Cero M. You can guess right away that it ended with the pile driver by Penta up applying to him that he was going to win. You know that's always been the case with Penta anyway. Next up, we have Scorpio Sky versus Allen Five Angels. Allen did what he can to apply his speed to win, but it still wasn't good enough. Scorpio Sky continues to overcome being at the top of his game but however we'll see how <coughs> ethan page and scorpio sky do in both singles and tag team competitorship next up we got fuego del sol versus matt hardy as you can guess fuego del sol tried to bring out the fire but it was still no luck he still lost to matt hardy when he put him in the in the leech one of his finisher moves that he's been he applied to many times over against anybody that stood in his way so that's how it, it finishes next up we got the last two matches Ren Narita versus Royce Isaacs this was a really good match Ren Narita making his AEW debut coming from the LA Dojo of New Japan Pro Wrestling great match and of course people will be surprised who Ren Narita is once AEW fans are getting to know New Japan Probably this will be a good thing for them. But I did not expect that Ren Rio was going to win. But however, I'm happy that he did. It's really amazing to see. Now the main event is 
Rocky Romero taking on JD Drake. What a great match, in my opinion, because you got another part of David versus Goliath. No one was able to, they keep kick, kicking out of the pinfall. You can guess exactly that's how it's been played out the entire time. But however, I was expecting Rocky Romero was going to apply the the arm bar. But no, but he was playing smart where he was injuring JD Drake's arm, and that's what happened. But however, he was keeping paying attention to the wingmen were outside. I'm talking about Avalon, Benoni, and Menneth. But um Rocky Mermel applied the Casa, whatever they call it, onto JD Drake to win the match. But however, the wingmen decided to beat him up. But all of a sudden he was rescued by none other than his former Rapongi Vice tag team, Trent, along with the best friends with Chuck Taylor, Chris Satlander, and of course, Orange Cassidy. So it was a great moment. I did enjoy where they gave Rocky Romero the hug. He got a boot from Chris Statlander. Thought it was great. So I enjoyed Rocky Romero being there. I Hopefully we can get to see him down the line in the future with AEW. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of, of course, me reviewing AEW Dark and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, the next ones coming up, we have Got to Move 120, one, number, number 120. Uh, NWA Power, hopefully, and of course, we got AW Dark and NXT, so all of that will be on on the next episode. Um, I will be finding more information on, of course, the recent development on Kagetsu and Hazuki, who made their appearance in the Hanakamura Memorial Show. Speculations are beginning about possible that she could, they both could return after they retired in 2019 and 2020 in 2020 so we'll see where that's going to lead us uh hopefully there'll be more to review but for now i'll see you guys in the next dwc time in the same dwc channel i must bid all of you adieu so goodbye Mwah. and have a nice day bang